Hello everybody, it's your boy. <laughs> I, I don't know why, I've, I've done that like a few times now and it really doesn't suit me. But it is ya yeah boy, Dane Cobain from Dane Reads. This is my Q3 2020 favourites video. Uh, these are the top 10 books of the books I've read from July to September in 2020. Um, I think um, September was a pretty slow reading month, but overall I think there's probably about 80 or 90 books to choose from, and so this is the top 10. Alas, I don't have the books to hand, so we're just going to go through them. So, at number 10, we have Instructions for British Servicemen in France, 1944, by the Bodleian Library. I actually did a full review of this, which I will link to below, and um, it's basically like a short reproduction of um, like a guidebook that was given to British servicemen um, during the Second World War, during the attempt to free um, occupied France. And um, there were some quite interesting things in it. For example, like they the, they made the point in it that the Germans have actually treated the French reasonably well, and so if we're going to go in and try and drive out the Germans, Germans, I say, I say we, as in me and the lads, we're going to go down and drive out the Germans. We're going to sh show that Hitler chap what for. Tally ho. Um, <laughs> totally lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so the Germans had been reasonably well behaved, especially I think towards like the women and stuff and had been quite respectful. And so um, basically the onus was on the British servicemen not to just go over there and be penises basically there was like instructions on like don't drink too much and all this stuff uh, it was interesting because on the on the rear of it it said uh, it's one of the few like guidebooks that tells you more about the people going to the place than about the place itself and number nine we have the diamond as big as the ritz by f scott fitzgerald why is the diamond as big as the ritz and other stories there were probably i think five or six stories in there um but it was the title story that was my favorite story because there's almost this like lost world element basically there's this like family has this secret where they have this mine where there's literally a diamond as big as the ritz beneath the mountainside they have enough diamonds to make you, you know the more infinitely rich and so they have to kind of keep this secret and that's all I really want to say about it really well written it's F Scott Fitzgerald man so if you like the great Gatsby and stuff then you're probably gonna like um, um, the diamond as big as the Ritz and number eight we have Julius Caesar by William Shakespeare so um, I mean it's a Shakespeare play what more can you say but obviously I really enjoyed it because I'm kind of into history uh, Caesar I think is particularly fascinating um, and also it goes really well with Antony and Cleopatra, which is one of my uh, other favourites of Shakespeare's plays and obviously especially his historic plays. Uh, just if you haven't read it yet, go and read it. Julius Caesar, mate. At number seven, we have Tom Nichols' The Death of Expertise. Uh, I've done a review of this and I might have done one of Julius Caesar as well. I'll just link below to all the reviews that I did of all of these books. Uh, so The Death of Expertise is a non-fiction book and um, it's basically about how everyone is an expert today and actually you can find experts that have conflicting opinions on the same data and the same subject matter and stuff. Um, but also, basically the death of expertise is that people no longer trust e experts. The idea being that like, for example, women would be more likely to listen to Gwyneth Paltrow saying that they need to bleach their anus by doing that weird you know that weird dawn yoga where you're like naked and you you go you go like this you go like this and <laughs> wait for the sun to rise that's an actual thing i don't know why it's a thing but this is the point is that like like people are starting to listen to people who say you should you know expose your anus to the sun while doing yoga when like then they won't listen to their own doctor like their doctor will be like you have cancer you know should we should we do this sort of standard medical treatment that might save your life and they're like no we're gonna just go and get a suntan on our anuses and number six we have losing my virginity by uh richard branson almost forgot his name there which would be kind of bad uh, it's non-fiction it's like a, a autobiography it was really interesting actually i i mean i didn't know a lot of like the history of virgin and stuff so even stuff like i was learning about like tubular bells and how that was recorded and that was cool uh reading a lot of stuff about the weather balloon flights that you did i mean i actually did i sell them i think i sold them but i did have shares in virgin atlantic um i did sell them so i'll probably buy them back at some point i'm trying to consolidate my shares you see it was just interesting to read his you know the story of his life i suppose and number five, we have Dance Macabre by Stephen King. And so this is non-fiction. It's very early on in his career, kind of early to mid-70s, I think. And um, it basically looks at the horror landscape in terms of movies, literature, and just where a lot of our tropes and ideas come from. 
And so because of that, it's like super interesting because it's King, you know, talking about Lovecraft and stuff like that. But it does sort of feel a bit dated because again, like there was one point where he talked about the Ramones as being this exciting new band. Um, and he was like, no, he said that like nobody had ever written a horror novel about a haunted car. And it's like, well, at the time I'm reading it, you've done Christine and from a Buick 8, mate, you've done two. So, yeah, I mean, it was really interesting just to get a greater overview of the horror genre, I suppose. And um, it's Stephen King, man. I always enjoy reading Stephen King. In at number four, I can show you something from this one. This is The Pretty Boys of Gangster Town, poetry by Martin Gray. Probably my favourite co uh, poetry collection of the year so far. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out a poem that I can read here. We'll do Rock City, because me and Dave Ford and the Ilk have a, have a song called Rock City. I was desperate for a working time machine, a DeLorean, a phone booth. Didn't matter. As long as it took me back to the Rock City dance floor during Here Comes the Rain, when she disappeared to the bathroom so I could grab the arm of my younger self and implore him to leave the gig before she had his number. When he'd shrug me off and tell me to get lost, I'd tell him he would, between affairs in the few minutes longer than it should have taken walks to the corner shop, until she'd walk half a step in front of him to keep an eye on his eyes, how they'd awkwardly arrange the table mats and TV remotes to cover up the worst of the gougers, and the checks on volume, current channel and previous channel when she arrived back home. I'd put myself between him and the music to tell him where she'd keep the stolen medication he'd wash and wash down the sink, how she'd threatened to stab his eyes while he was sleeping and how he'd learned to be silent, because one hit back would have made him guilty of being more than the worst of the monster he deserved to be. But when he still wouldn't listen, I'd hurl my feeble fists at his eyes, ribs anywhere, until I took a dive when the bouncers came, smiling wide as we were hauled away, knowing that being barred from Rock City would be a price I was prepared to pay. I've just realised there's a hidden poem in this. At the bottom of the pages, ever feel... Hang on, let's see. Ever feel like a fish? in a bowl, a cage without bars, with unreachable sky, confusing reflections catching your eye as you go, round and round in circles, breathing, accepting, breathing, as long as you stay in the fish bowl, as long as you stay in your mirror for your soul and don't bite the hand that feeds you that was cool that was nice i wouldn't have noticed that if i hadn't have filmed this video in at number three we have the mysterious affair at styles now i know what you're thinking this is one of the most famous agatha christie titles and i just somehow never got round to it until q you know q3 of this year it was very good that's why it's this high up on the list i can't really tell you much about it because um you know, I don't want to spoil it, but it would be a potentially good place to start if you're new to Agatha Christie. Let's, le let's leave it at that. And number two, we have Bicentennial Man by Isaac Asimov. And um, yeah, this is actually a short story collection. I've read like the novel length version of Bicentennial Man that he did. Uh, I can't remember who co-wrote it with him now. Um, but yeah, that was okay. But it is just, you know, the shorter version was kind of more succinct and to the point without really losing anything. Um, and that's only the title story as well. I mean, the whole collection was just fantastic. Asimov's short stories are really where he's at his best, I think. So I would definitely recommend Bicentennial Man by Isaac Asimov. So that only leaves number one, and it is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Again, a uh, link will be below to my full review of this, and I went into like 25 minutes of it. Um, I, I said in my review of that that... Um, you know, if you're lucky, a book will have maybe one, two paragraphs that just totally blow you away. And Eugenides would have like two paragraphs on the same page where you're like, whoa, whoa. Uh, it was just really beautifully written, quite harrowing. I guess I would call it like literary horror. Um, just read it, mate, read it. It was really, really good. And uh, again, as I say, link below. It was a five star read for me. And I want to read some more Jeffrey Eugenides soon. Probably Middlesex, I guess. Although I'm kind of intimidated by what I've heard about it. Oh dear. So there we have it, those were my Q3 2020 favourites. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Let me know some of your favourites of the last quarter as well, I'd be keen to see those. My next favourites video will be basically in January. That's mad, isn't it? And, um, well, it'll be either at the end of December or January, depending on what I'm reading towards the end of the year and how my upload schedule is and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that, that, that big one will be like the top 40 books of 2020 ranked in order and my overall favourite of the year. And I quite like doing those. Uh, previous winner was Stoner by John Williams. I think that was 2019's winner. And 2018's winner was The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I think Stoner was 2019's winner. I can't remember. 
Oh, I forgot to do my outro for that. Um, but yeah, and as always, hit that like and stuff, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.